say is entirely unknown, and I think that's as it should be. The home seems to me to be the proper sphere for the man, and certainly once a man denies his domestic duties, he becomes painfully effeminate, does he not? And I don't like that. It makes the man so painfully attractive. <laughs> Cecily, Mama, whose views on education are remarkably strict, has brought me up to be extremely short-sighted, so you don't mind me looking at you through my glasses? It's strange. He never mentioned to me he had a ward. He grows more interesting hourly. Hmm. I'm not sure, however, that the news inspires me with feelings of unmixed delight. I'm very fond of you, Cecily. I've liked you ever since I met you. But I'm bound to state that now that I know you are Mr. Worthing's ward, I cannot help expressing uh, a wish you were, well, just a little older than you seem to be, and not quite so very alluring in appearance. <laughs> in fact, if I may speak candidly, well, Cecily, to speak with perfect candor, I wish you were a full forty-two and more than unusually plain for your age. Ernest has a strong, upright nature. He's the very soul of truth and honor. Disloyalty would be impossible to him as deception. But even men of the most noblest possible moral character are extremely susceptible to the physical charms of others. Modern, no less than ancient history, provides us many most painful examples of that which I speak. If it were not so, history would be quite